As the title suggests, it's all about the learner. Uh, we have a highly experienced educator making the presentation, uh, former dean of the School of Albright School of Education, uh, Craig Scheiber. Uh, Craig, take it away. We've got a, a good number of people here in the room for you. Uh, thank you so much, Aaron. Can everybody hear me? Is this coming through? It's coming through to me. Awesome. So I'm, I'm okay. All right. Well. Yeah. So I was just uh, watching or listening to uh, Vicky's presentation, and then yesterday I listened to Leanna Akers. And uh, you know, one of the things that I, I think uh, is in happening in this new era here of uh, technology is that folks like me can feel overwhelmed uh, at times when we see all these new tools to use, and uh, this sense, oh, I've got to learn the tool, and uh, not even at that point thinking about where it fits into teaching, but just that I need to learn the tool. And so I think it's important at times for us to think about, well, why are we using these tools? How can these tools serve uh, education the way we want them to? And more importantly, how can we take these tools and use them um, to uh, improve education? So what I want to do today with you is to say to you is help you develop a mindset to allow you to generate and create online teaching skills and techniques. Um, that So this is a session to teach you to fish rather than to give you the fish. So when you see about the techniques, you see that they're the fish. But in this case, I want you to teach it so that when you see some of these new uh, tools that are out there, you can say, oh, I could use that in this way or that way. Because all of you are good teachers. Probably a lot of you have spent years teaching in front of a classroom face to face. So you know your stuff. And so it's just a matter now of being able to creatively apply your knowledge to some new tools that are um, being uh, put out for you to use. So, and really what's happening with these new tools, yep, it's creating what we would call a paradigm shift. This huge change with technology making uh, knowledge ubiquitous is really changing uh, the world we're living in. And so education needs to change with it as well. This paradigm shift, though, has a way that since it's new, since we're in the midst of the change itself, not everybody even agrees as to what it looks like. Some people say that technology is the worst thing that happened to education. Some people say it's the best thing. Um, and there's all sorts of variations around there. But the point is, is that that's the world we're in. So just as word processing never made students better writers in the 90s, word processing is now in every classroom in K-12. And so um, this is the new world, and with it, we can choose to make it a better one. So let's take a look at what is actually going on in this huge paradigm shift. We've got basically a traditional model where we all came from, where we had one textbook, we had one lesson, we had one way to learn, we had one classroom, we had one time that that classroom met, and we had one teacher. That was in the traditional model during the industrial era. But now in the information era, our model looks different. We actually have many resources available. We have many options for lessons. We have many ways to learn. We have an expansive classroom that goes beyond the four walls. We have anytime learning so that students can be looking at you delivering your lecture at two in the morning in their house while their kids are tucked away sleeping. And your job as a teacher now starts to look more like a facilitator as you set up all of the possible learning objects that a learner can use on their learning path to reach the golden uh, end of whatever they're after for their learning. So how do we get to reset our minds to think about online education? Well, I just gave you the first part there of this paradigm change. But the other part is we have to set ourselves up with this structural template of the learning process, just as we did when we stood in front of a classroom. So what is that learning process? What are, what are universals that will always be there in that learning process? We have the universals, but we also have this new structure. Well just going around the edges of it again here. 
Think about the traditional paradigm. And I keep on going back to the traditional paradigm so that you can compare. And by being able to compare where we're at now and seeing that different, you might be able to understand this change a little better. The traditional paradigm really did end up having the instructor in the center of the equation. And as an instructor then, we took the feedback, we decided the feedback, the curriculum, and the learner was just another part of that uh, process that was almost a passive recipient of what was going on. But in the new learner-centered paradigm, the learner is at the center of the equation. And everything that's done is to help that learner on that learner's learning path um, navigate through the learning path. So the caveat, if you saw in the language, heard in my language there, is that it's all about the learner. Yep, and that sounds great. And it also means that the learner has to take on agency. The learner at the center now has to be introspective. They have to know where they want to go on their learning path. They need to engage with the learning objects that work best for them. They need to reflect on what they've learned from the learning objects. And, yep, they need to share. They need to collaborate. They need to go to the public square and socialize their learning, practice it. And then finally, they actually have to do a lot of self-assessment as for how they are moving along on that front. Let me tell you, most learners, when they get into a classroom, are not comfortable with that. They don't think they can do it because they've been in the industrial model. But they actually do know it. Think of the uh, concept of Facebook. I have never seen a class called Facebook 101. And yet, we have millions of users of Facebook. How did they learn that? Well, they had agency. They chose to decide they wanted to use it uh, and be, uh, to learn Facebook. They chose to engage with it, to make mistakes, to fail, uh, to reflect on their failures when they made a mistake on Facebook, to go and talk to others to learn how to do it, and then to assess how good they were at Facebook. And, and currently, if they want to continue using Facebook for that matter. So you can encourage your learners in the classroom that they do know how to have agency and that they don't need to be those passive uh, recipients of uh, learning that we had in the industrial era. Okay, so how can we take the strengths of online learning now to meet these needs? This is kind of just recapping what I've just been talking about here. As instructors in this new world, we can continue to model our own unique style. This is the good news. You can still be that instructor that everybody loves because of what you add to the class. You just need to figure out how to be creative and generate ideas off of the tools that exist now. We need to practice in this world, though, and be our own autonomous learner with our own agency. So just as the students have to have agency, we need to aggressively check out the new tools and apply them to our style. So what will be the new uh, techniques that we create, borrow, or tweak in our classroom? Well, let's, uh, I'm going to give you a little practice now. This is where you can, I'll show you how we can go about doing this creative uh, process. Remember, I'm teaching you to fish. Take a look at discussion boards. Now, discussion boards, uh, at their worst, you hear of people saying, well, the students are just walking through them each week, filling out answers, and there's nothing to be achieved by it. But if we look at discussion boards from a little different thing, comparing them to classroom discussions uh, in a different way, look at this. In a classroom discussion, traditional four-wall discussion, only the students who are quick thinkers, who are, are willing to take chances in front of the group, tend to respond to classroom discussions. So quiet and more reflective students may struggle in a classroom setting. But in a discussion board setting, all of the students have time to think. Uh, they can think over their ideas, they can put them together, and they can post, and they can think about responding to other classmates. This is a huge advantage for having students have that social place to try out their ideas. If we realize that, that discussion uh, boards serve the purpose of trying out ideas, then we can post the kinds of questions and use discussion boards in a manner that honors that need for students to test their ideas and themselves generate is in a safe space where they can uh, interact with others that way. 
unlike what might happen in a fast one hour or two hour class session in a uh, face to face situation, we're not there's not enough time for all the students to even uh, say anything. So take a look at announcements now as another case study to work on it. So announcements, again, now these are tools that all of us have to use. So you don't even have to learn how to use like uh, some of the uh, examples of Google Docs, things like that that are important to learn. These are ones in, in Blackboard that are already in our day-to-day -day usage. What do we know about announcements? Well, they play a little different role in an online setting. They're not, they're kind of like a table of contents if you think about it for the upcoming week or for the content. They're not your chance, though, to stand in front of the classroom and improvise. Um, doing uh, announcements each day the, at different times and that may not be as effective as when maybe in an hour-long class you're able to make different comments and adjust based on that. So what are key elements to guide announcements in online learning? Given what we've just said, what I've been talking about, what you know about good teaching, and I'll say, given about the learner, knowing that we can use announcements to help students either be introspective, meaning deciding where they want to go, how they want to engage uh, in the, the learning, how they might reflect on the learning. Can we use announcements to accomplish any of these aspects of good learning for the learner-centered classroom? So here's what I want to do. You guys probably already know a good bunch of this. So on the screen, if you look at the top upper left, you'll see there's a T right here for text. If you click on that text, you'll see that it comes up blue and you can use other colors if you'd like. Um, then click on the screen here. You can actually type on there. So I'm going to say that for announcements, one good rule or way to think about using announcements is to um, uh, Say or tell class, tell class what, oops, what will happen for the week. All right. So I'm asking you guys now. Can you add your points on here? You may already be doing some things on there that we can learn from too. What do you do with announcements that use that technology in a way that puts the learner at the center? So you review what we learned last week. Absolutely, great idea. So, wow, what a, and it's in writing. So I always remember when I used to teach eighth graders, I would talk to them, I'd say, well, this is what we just did. And the next day they'd say, you never told us that, Mr. Schieber. Um, but look at this, with announcements, you actually have it written down. They can review that in writing anytime and you can hold them accountable for that as well. So uh, how about some more ideas? Synthesize discussion board posts in a sentence or two. Awesome. So here now, remember, discussion boards are the place, the social place to try out ideas. And now what you're doing is being able to give life to the ideas that the students have posted on the discussion boards. Brilliant. And you can be that facilitator role where you're connecting things. Now, someone just put one on there. Can you move that one down? I can't quite read it. Get students thinking about a current event and how it affects the learning. Awesome. And think about this, the current event. Think about it. if it's just on a Saturday session, you get one chance at it. If you get it at Monday on your discussion on the, on the announcements, you've got the whole week for them to chew on it there. Ask students to reflect on the reasons why the next content will be introduced. Oh, this is that setting a preset. And this goes to that introspect about what is their learning path. Awesome, you guys have got this. Isn't, isn't this fun where you can see about, okay, I can do this. Let's go to the next one. Instructor videos, ah, boy. So here's one, um, I'm hoping that a number of you have tried those, but boy, it's a new, new, new task to do. So what do we know? We know that the purpose and advantage to videos is uh, it's information giving, uh, it's information clarification, and it gives students the personal connection uh, so that they can be seeing off. They can look at you at two in the morning again and remember what it is you have to share with them. So let's try this again. With the instructor video consideration, what are your suggestions for instructor videos that, again, keep the learner in the center and the videos give you that choice? Is there something that you can do with videos to help them 
choose their learning path or how to be engaged. You know, one of the things I saw with instructor videos that I, oh, here we go. I use them for a uh, video of an, oh, nice. So, you know, and this would be where I would talk about, yeah, the, the, the announcements can maybe not seem as connected. People talk about online learning not being personal. Uh, I've seen a number of instructors that uh, sometimes they'll do their announcement or their video um, in different rooms of their house or uh, one of our uh, colleagues in SAL does it on the waterfront or does it after he's arrived somewhere. And so it gives this informal kind of uh, connection and they get to know you as a person that way. Any other ideas that we have for, for the um, instructor videos? One that I think is important is that it needs to be short. So that's an interesting thing, about two to three minutes, kind of like a pop song, is about the length that these should go. Anything longer and we start losing um, the students on that. Any other ideas about videos? About Is there any way we could use students to do self-assessment through videos? Ask students to assess the video and make a better one. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. We've got an instructor um, that is real good at having the students create uh, some of the partial content for the class where you give uh, big ideas and then the students interact for it and they generate again. Remember, the students at the center of the learning process. So agency, they need to be able to generate and try out things. Excellent. I just learned that I could use a of Wookie Wookie for my, yes, yeah, so you could use, I think you're meaning your, your uh, smartphone. Um, so what a great way to go. Just use your smartphone. And you, uh, is that what you mean, I think? Is that person who did that? Is it V-O-K-I? Put your, uh, give me a yes or no if I'm on that front there. Is that good? Aha, there it is. <laughs> Vokey.com. Thank you so much. I am going to check that one out. I wonder if I click on that. If that, no, I won't do. All right. So that's videos. Let's try one more. Discussion boards. Okay, back to the one that I started with. This one will take some more creativity and, and instructor agency. That's what you guys are applying here to learn the new techniques here. So I know that uh, Enzo Sinato, uh, he's uh, really done some crazy things. He uses uh, discussion boards to um, do simulations in class. And, and some of those are pretty complex, and he has to know the technology pretty good. But some are pretty simple, too, so that um, you can get students interacting in different ways. So think about discussion boards and think about now, can you use discussion boards in an introspective way defining where um, they're supposed to be going on their learning paths? Oh, well, sure, you can you know, ask them about what do they wanna learn from this class? Um, engaging in the materials. Okay, you might have them talk about some of the reading that they had this week. Create a story that students need to take a character and dialogue, to take a, a character and dialogue. Nice, nice. So that's kind of a simulation uh, type way of, um, of using uh, discussion boards here. Um, anything with assessing. I, one of the things I've thought about assessing with discussion boards is having students post um, what they would be suggest are good questions for a test at the end of the quarter. And uh, guess what? You could actually have those uh, questions uh, shared with everybody. They talk about them, what the answers would be. And then guess what? You could use those questions at the end of the quarter that you think are the most effective. And so everybody's seen them because they've been on the, um, they've been on the discussion board. And so it's a fair game and everybody's being able to prepare for that. Um, I can't see the one that was just posted. Can you move it down a little further there? Somebody, I don't know if I have control to do that. Sorry, how? Well, there you go. Just try. Yeah. Have students share personal story that relates to uh, the concept being covered. Okay, so personal connections, excellent. Use them each week two times. I ask them to view online videos of a teaching strategy, then assess the video. Awesome, awesome. So, um, and one of the things then is that getting students used to that, you know, in a classroom discussion, they might make a point and they don't think twice about it. 
you ask them to post it on discussion board and sometimes they're nervous. It's not as they wonder if it's a safe environment. So you want to work on figuring out how to set that tone with everybody uh, on the discussion boards for that. Cool. Well, I hope that's helpful here. That um, th Those are just a few samples of taking the technology tools that we all have to use are already there. They're not even the fancy ones there. And we can figure out how to apply them into good learning for this new paradigm where the learner is the center of the learning. And hopefully it frees you up to not feel overwhelmed when you're um, looking at these new um, technologies and not get caught up with the fear of the technology, but rather the joy of the creating what that technology can do for you that way. All right. So um, list one idea. This is that final thing. This is like, uh, you know, um, we use uh, for face to face classes, we use an exit slip where students go, oh, okay, this is what I learned today, or this is um, what I would uh, like to see next week or whatever. So here's your exit slip. List one idea that you can take from this session uh, on here, and then the rest of us can benefit from your exit slip as well. So let's see what folks have here. It's a great tool for collaboration. So you learned how to use this PowerPoint, and you can have students uh, write on this. So you could do this uh, in your... Um, if you use collaborate um, with your student sessions uh, when you're teaching as well, yeah. We get anybody else to post here. You can post them anonymously. What is one idea that you learned from this session that you could apply? Okay, well, I hope that's not an indicator that you haven't learned anything from this session. <laughs> But uh, are there any questions there? Oh, here we go. I like the uh, items listed across the learner as a guide to uh, as a guide for ideas. Yeah, I think this is a nice uh, individual little chart here to keep in your mind, and uh, it's fairly simple. Five points on there that you can always kind of keep in your mind. Any other questions that people that were listening in that want to make or questions you want to ask comments? Okay, so we've got Voki is great. Okay, we got that one. I'm going to be certain like that. Want to explore how to use uh, wikis more? Yeah, so that would be like uh, wikis are the variation of Google Docs. Um, and uh, you might be able to throw that into discussion boards as well. Excellent. Okay, Aaron, it looks like I got everybody out of here a couple minutes early. Um, do you want to say anything? Um, otherwise, um, I think we have um, have made it. Are you there, Aaron? <laughs> Thanks, Brody. <laughs> Great. And I, I like the idea that it, it is a review. It's part of um, um, what you guys already know, just a way to be courageous moving into the future here. <laughs> La yesterday, Vicki and I at our panel discussion had a wonderful time talking. She's a brilliant uh, faculty. We're lucky to have her at CityU. And um, I look forward to having the conversation with her like what we did yesterday, too. Craig, thanks so much for uh, this wonderful presentation, everyone. Yeah, stay tuned for our next sessions. Uh, certainly, we have one going on in this room in about five minutes, and there are several other options available as well. So uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks again, Craig. Right. Thanks, Aaron.